and women are just gold diggers. Without you, I was lost. I was in a dark room, and now that I found you, I got my pants back. I'm a like with Lockers, and the reason I like his name is Tom Likes Us. I have four teenage boys, and I make them listen to you every day religiously, and they are following your guidelines. I've been following your stuff, Tom. Well, if you're following my dog. stuff, you're looking for poon. <laughs> yeah, 10 4. <laughs> I don't care if the women have orgasms. What I care about is, at the same time they're having a hard time having an orgasm, they start saying things like, I don't know if I want to do that. It's okay. demeaning the women, and I think you're trying to okay. uh, you're trying to use me and demean me. <laughs> okay. okay. Shut up, sweetheart. <laughs> Just keep your mouth full there, darling. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're better off leasing than owning. Right. You know, yep. you go fishing, you, you you catch one, you throw it back. So I guess as the saying goes, if it floats, flies, or messes around, <laughs> better to rent it. Or bleeds every 28 days. <laughs> Can't trust something that doesn't die after it bleeds, That's right? right. Exactly. Coming to work today, it took me a while to get out of my car. Not because I was listening to Kay White, waiting for the latest Tom Petty song to end, no. By the way, did you see they chose call letters for that station? They finally chose the callers. K L A N is going to be the call letters. K L A N. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Because you're like, what does that stand for? K L A N. If you had a station called K White, K L A N would be a good set of callers. I, I think that's brilliant. When I go out with a check, man, they want to go out and they expect these big elaborate dinners and all this stuff. You know what I do? You say your forty dollar rule. I got the one dollar rule. I don't pay for nothing. <laughs> I don't pay for nothing. You have told all the men that it's okay to beat their women because you know. When did I say that? I don't know when you said it, but my what? husband when he beats me. Oh, your husband oh, beats you. Is that is that right? Yeah. Your husband beats you. So let me understand. He knocked you up and he beats you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But why are you having uh, kids with somebody who beats you? Um, he doesn't beat me all the time. And oh, because he doesn't beat you all the time. He only beats you occasionally. Praying is a waste of time. I mean, people are better off praying to me. Well, maybe they should. In fact, I command everybody. In front of your radios, everybody, get on your knees. And beg my forgiveness. Now, as your highest authority you'll ever reach, my next command is as follows. Everybody on the freeway, make a left turn right now, wherever you are. Hang on a second, Tiffany. This is Bert. Bert, what do you want to say to Tiffany here? How old are you, uh, Tiffany? 20. 20. So you yeah. don't really know anything about anything. You will find someone else. You'll drop what you got and go with it. Go with what? Whatever you find. <laughs> Whose dog is that barking in the background, by the way? <laughs> oh, that's Lino. He barks at every little bitch that comes around. <laughs> From somewhere, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely, you got it, fascinated. If you're not, I kick your ass right off the air. 
Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Aaron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hey, Hi. I'm not going to ask you how you're doing because you know what? I don't care. What I called for is, you know, I've been listening to you for the past couple weeks, and, you know, you've been giving guys all this advice on how to treat women and, you know, don't buy them anything. So what I want to know is what's your advice for women? How should we be treating them? Well, you have to give me a specific question, and I'll answer it. Like when we go out, we you know we go to clubs and stuff. Like, how should we be treating the men? Like, it depends on what you want. Well, obviously, we want attention. You know, we want to be treated nice. We want to be, you know, I guess we want money in a way. In that, you, we want, uh, you want money, out. you want attention, and you and you, and you don't and you don't want to have sex. No, actually, I do. <laughs> I don't know about the other women out there, but you know, I, I mean, I totally agree with what you said the other day. In that, if a woman wants to have sex with you, you don't have to buy her anything. Like that's, right. That's right on. That's right on. Um, but I mean, as far as like, I don't know if I want to say manipulate them, but you know, how do we get what we want? Well, well, again, it depends on which particular thing you're trying to get, because getting sex and getting money are two different things. If you want sex from a man, put your left leg at the ten and your right leg at the two. Uh mm huh. -hmm. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Uh, so if you're if homely, you buy him a couple. If you're homely, buy him a couple of drinks, and then put your left leg at the ten, the right leg at the two. All right. Now that question was actually for my friends. Now for myself, I'm actually married, and I've been married for four years. And I want to know how I should be treating my husband. Like, what's your opinion? Because you know, I don't want to be you know the fat, fugly housewife. You know that you talk about all the time. So and don't be that. No, I'm, I'm not going to be that, but I want to know, like, you know, how do you think we should be treating our men, our husbands? How do you? How do I think you should be treated? It depends on what you want. What do you want out of your husband? I mean, be, be specific. Uh, I want him to be faithful, and I want him to be nice to me. And, you can't control you know. what other people do. Mm -hmm. The best shot you have at keeping somebody faithful is giving them everything they want. Okay, so what do men really want other than sex? Well, they they don't just want sex. They want it when they want it. Uh-huh. The way they want it. Okay, and that's cool with me. That's cool. I don't mind. Right. You know, they don't I want figure you to... if, I, if I don't give it to my husband, some other woman out there is going to give it to him. That's right. They don't want you cutting your hair short. Oh, I know. That's that's like the worst thing you can do. <laughs> right. They don't, don't do you they don't want you chunking up. See, that's my problem right now. I'm a chunky one, so. Well, you got to take care of that or you're in danger. Yep. But why does it have to be like that, you know? That's how it is. It's By like, the way, were you chunky when you met him? Uh, no, actually, um, when I met him, I was really thin and, you know. I and then you thought, well, now I met my soulmate, so now I don't need to work hard anymore with this. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you you don't try so hard because. You know, you're married and you have each other and, you know. Yeah, well, guess what? Uh, the competition never ends. Mm-hmm. Never. Yep. Wow. So, you know, you said before that men kind of like, oh, how do I say this? Um, you said that, like, men will kind of, they're as faithful as their options. Men are as faithful as their what options. Do you mean? Well, uh, if if their options look better than you do, they're likely uh -huh. to take them up on that. Mm -hmm. Darling, uh, by, by, by chunking up, you're saying to your husband, I don't care anymore. By the way, yeah. let me add, let well, me add, added, let added me add, well. that if he let, it's not the point, he's the guy. Mm -hmm. He probably makes the majority of the income and pays the majority of the bills. I mean, he's made stupid comments like, hey, if you, you know, if you lose weight, I'll give you my paycheck. I'll even get a second job. And it's like, okay, yeah. I don't want your paycheck. I just, But he's you know. telling you how important this is to him. Yeah, but, you know, he's, you know, he's really fat himself. And it's like, I don't that's, care, you know. Well, if you I don't care, that's you guys are visual. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a matter of, of our... Uh, the, the way we're built. In order for a man to become aroused, 
He has to see something that gets him hot. Uh -huh. And your sweaty rolls of fat don't do that. Now, maybe his sweaty rolls of fat, you don't see them or don't care. Men care. And, and you see, if you're not turned on, we can't even tell by looking at you. But you can uh -huh. tell about us. Uh -huh. Wow. So uh, he, he, he's at the stage where he's telling you nicely. He doesn't want to uh -huh. fight with you. And he's trying to say it in such a way that he, uh, you know, it, it doesn't sound like he's nagging you. Uh -huh. he's, it sounds like he's trying to bribe you. Uh -huh. But but don't mistake that for the way he really feels. The way he really feels is he feels ripped off that he married you and that you chunked up. Mm hmm Yep. Wow. Wow, it's harsh. Um, That's how it is. Yep. Wow. Other than that, I mean, so pretty much, like, I kind of get the feeling that as long as you look good, you know, it doesn't matter like anything else, you know, it doesn't matter how you treat them. It doesn't matter. I mean, obviously you don't want to be a total, you know, what to them, but, um, so pretty much as long as you look good, that's, you know, what men care. I got eight, eight words for you that will, will have the, give you the best shot at saving and keeping your marriage good. Okay. Long mm -hmm. hair, mm -hmm. stay slim, sex anytime. Yeah, I totally agree with that one. Shut up. That's the that's the eight <laughs> words that yeah. will save your marriage. Yep. Okay. And uh, uh, the, 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 that's four. That's actually four lines, eight words, two words apiece. But I will tell you that uh, vast majority of women can't do at least two of those. <laughs> or won't do at least two of those. By the way, darling, I know you. I don't know you personally, but I know your type. The minute he dumps you, Five years from now, whatever you'll be back in the gym. Then, uh, why yeah, wait for that? Why wait for that to happen? Either. Why wait for uh, that to happen? I kind of feel like you know, I am going to lose the weight and I'm going to get back into shape. No, no, but it's kind of like no, you're you not. Know, no, it's no, no, kind of no, like darling. if I do, and he doesn't like me the way I'm right now, then what do I need him for? You know what I mean? Well, that's my point. You see, this marriage is based on you chunking up and not having to worry about being slim and you see that's what i this is why i'm against marriage because it encourages people to put their worst foot forward mm -hmm. you lock somebody into a you, you, you lock somebody in chains and handcuffs and then they have no incentive to do anything uh -huh. wow by the way he was fat when you met him yeah he's actually he's he was fat when i met him and he's gotten fatter but I don't really care. Because yeah, but you see, the thing is, you knew what you were getting when you married him. Yeah. You have you have the same person you, you married. He doesn't. That's true. But, I mean, well, we've been dating. We, we dated forever before we got married. And, you know, I was, a, I was a big girl when we got married. And he married me, so. Why you know. will you wait until your marriage breaks up to go to the gym? I won't. I won't. Yeah, because, um, you know, I go to the gym. And do you know who's at the gym? Hot girls. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, here's who's there. Single chicks. Uh -huh. with that stink of desperation that goes with the word single. Uh -huh. And chicks who just broke up with their boyfriend, husband, whatever. Uh-huh. Do you know how many married women are there? I don't None. Know. None. The only ones who are there, they're probably having affairs with somebody. You know what I'm talking about? They're overly interested in looking good. Yeah. Okay, so the bottom line here is there are a lot of women out there who do what you do. They eat like pigs, they gain 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, mm -hmm. and, and then the minute the marriage is over, they say, I can't believe better like that, and the first thing they do is lose the weight and get into shape for the next guy. Yep. It's just like people do with their houses. How many people live in houses where they say, you know, we ought to paint this kitchen. You know, we need new appliances. And then they never do it until they're trying to sell the house. Yeah. Wouldn't wow. you rather have lived in the house that had all the conveniences and have a nice looking place? Of course. Well, but people don't do it that way. So you're doing the same thing with your husband. Mm hmm. Wow. I mean, at the same time, too, if I'm going to be doing all this hard work, you know, he needs to do it too, but he's really not motivated. 
But the thing is, when you met him, he was a fat slob, and you loved him. Yeah, but... It's harder for you to make this argument. Mm Mm-hmm. True. Wow. Now you can you can ask him for other things like if he isn't getting it done in the bedroom like he used to or stuff like that. Start telling him what you want. Well, yeah, that's another thing too. Like, well, that I usually do, is one of the things. So yeah, I do rather everything. than rather than telling him to be something he never was, mm-hmm. how about you tell him to be something he was? Mm-hmm. That you see, it's it's this is the quid pro quo. You, the two of you should be the person that each of you met. Mm-hmm. So if you met a fat slob who who satisfied you in bed, time he's stepping up on the, uh, between the sheets. Mm-hmm. And if he met if he met a chick who was relatively hot and slim when he met her, uh-huh. he deserves to have that. Wow. Wow. All right, Tom. I'm gonna go to the gym today. Step it up. <laughs> Thanks a lot, darling. Thank you. Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. Like 1-800-5800-866. What college are you attending? Uh, I wasn't attending college. I right, I know. I know. You were going to Bonham Young University. No, but... Right, uh, that was the college I, I you were going to, right? No, I was going to go to college, but then I switched my career. You switched to, to Bonham Young. Yes, you did a transfer. Is that in Utah, Bonham Young? Yeah. Right, BYU. The Tom Likas Show. The top like this show. Wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Stacy on the top like this show. Hello. Busy over there, Stacy. Clearly, Stacy thinks I'm talking to the other Stacy. Probably listening to the radio. And that means she'll be waiting the full 70 seconds or more. Hey. Is that you, Stacy? Yes. When were you planning on speaking to me? I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of the state of Idaho, so my cell phone's kind of cutting in and out. I see. So here's my question for you, Tom. What happens when it's reversed? Who makes most of the money? Oh, I make as much. Actually, we're almost split down the middle. Why? You're still there? I'm a marketing executive, so it's important for me to look good. I mean, that's part of my profession. Right. I also, I was... And then I had to sign a contract before I got married that I would never weigh over 120 pounds. And? And I did. I didn't think I'd have to make him sign one. So you thought, well, most prenuptial agreements, I might tell you, (laughs) uh, they usually say the same thing for both people. No, not at all. I didn't think it'd be a problem. He was in great shape. And it was kind of a joke. I mean, it was kind of a, his his mom's kind of big, and, you know, it was kind of one of those things that I just had to, you know, make him understand that he would never have to live with that. But I do it for me, too. I mean, I'm a runner, and I like to be thin and look good. But I think that the same thing happens. I, I listen to you all the time, and I always think, this is what I always think, Tom, is that you are not speaking just about men. You're speaking about smart people. Smart people well, are, many times I'm just talking about people who women. want to get laid, no matter uh, whether they're men or women. But uh, there are many women who think I'm only giving advice out to men, which is not true. It's mostly men who call for advice. Well, and exactly. I mean, most of your advice is geared towards younger men who, you know, are likely to make relationships decisions that might affect them forever but when you're talking globally about about how you treat yourself and what you do and you go to school and you treat yourself as a some sort of a commodity that you want to be worth a lot (laughs) and you want to value yourself that's the way i take it so what happens i mean 
he spent a lot of time talking about, you know, men, that their women do this to them. But, you know, we I have a lot of friends that my, my girlfriends, we get this, you know, we travel together. We have a lot of fun together. And our men are, they're lazy. They're lazy men. Well, have you ever talked to him about it? Well, as far as just walking up to him and saying you're lazy? Well, and I'm not uh, just saying, you know, uh, this is not, you're not the person I bargained for. What happened to you? Do you ever say that to him? No, I think that's harder for a woman because, you know, we're built on the whole thing. We're supposed to love people no matter what, right? Well, supposed to, supposedly, but that's, believe me, I know it's not true. <laughs> Well, especially not for you, Tom. <laughs> I know it's not true. So, uh, I mean, the thing is, if you don't tell him what you want, he'll never change. And by the way, you can't change other people. Exactly. But if you don't tell, but if so you don't, I tell him? darling, if you don't tell him what's important to you, he can't decide on his own to make a change. Okay, so give me a script. What do I say? You sit him down and you say, you know, I I should have talked to you about this a long time ago, but I never did. Because I would hoping you, I was hoping it would change, but I know, because I heard Tom Likas say things never change. <laughs> so I just go up to him and I, and and then what if he says, you know, this is, this is who I am now, you know? Well, you have then, then you have to decide whether you're going to tolerate it, meaning stay, or not. Hmm. And maybe that's why I haven't talked to him about it, because I'm not ready to make that decision. Well, you have to be ready to back it up with action. <laughs> but do you think most men are? I mean, like the caller before you said he'd give his paycheck if his wife, you know, do you think they're actually ready to back it up with action? I think they're just, you know, trying to force the issue to get. By the way, I think issue. I think they should be. I think people should be ready to back it up with action. As I have said to you, I was married to more than one person who would complain about me. I have and never, so, I, well, that's, that's one thing I don't do, is I don't complain. Well, and, and things don't also, also don't get better, but, I'm, uh, but I, the nagging doesn't work. It's just stating your opinion and stating it once, which you haven't don't, done. Don't you think that, I mean, if you have somebody who goes out for a run on, in the morning while you sleep in. And then, you know, she takes her bike out while Men you Men don't TV. take there, hints. I, Men I, don't take to... hints. Uh, Men okay. don't take hints. <laughs> that's not a hint. That's, that's, just that's a hint. That's a hint. What's going on around No, it's a hint. You want him to get the hint. I want you him to get up and move. But but you want him to just figure it out that you do it and he doesn't and that maybe he ought to do it too. He's not going to figure that out ever. Yeah, I guess you're right. You I have, don't know. You have to tell him it's important to you, and if he doesn't change, you have to be prepared to back it up with action. And you see, I'm not convinced yet that this is do or die for you. I'm convinced that if he decides not to do anything about it, you'll stay with him anyway. You know, that's, I think that there's more women in that situation than there are men. Well, I think more men would leave because of this than there are women. I agree with you. Uh, and I'm telling you, I would too. You would stay or you would leave? Leave. <laughs> you would leave because they got fat. Yes. Yeah, I... I'm just not there. But the thing is, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair to do that without giving him fair warning. <laughs> okay, so I I go into the house and I say, "All right, here's what we need to do. We need to get you on a plan." What if he takes that offensively? I would take. No, that you're not getting him on a plan. Okay, I'm he not. He needs to get himself on a plan. He needs to figure out what will work for him, and then he needs to do what will work for him. Chances then, are he knows what to do. Want that? Okay. I try to cater to his pride. Forget that. 
forget that? That's what yeah. you tell every woman to no, do. No, that's not what I do. I tell <laughs> I tell women to be honest. I tell women that men don't get hints. I also tell women you can't right, nap. You also tell us to, you know, to be who they want us to be. So right. that's what I try to do. But no, no, you're being, <laughs> you're trying to avoid telling him the truth. Well, he's a good person, you know. I mean, there's well, nothing wrong with the person. Well, great. I, just I think hope. It's, it's one of those things that there's a lot of men that think that women don't need to, you know, be sexually attracted to their partner. Well, anymore. they especially think that true. when their partner doesn't say anything. Yeah, and you don't think that there would be, like, an underlying resentment there if he just had to get in shape because I told him I was... Well, then you're married to the wrong guy. Because the way you say it is not, you're going to have to get in shape or else I'm out of here. No, yell. I never yell. You just say to him, look, <laughs> this is not what I bargained for. I am the woman that you married. You know what? I want the man that I married. It's important to me. And in order for me to stay attracted to you the way I was when we met, I kind of need you to look like you did the way the, the way you did when we met. Now, everyone's going to get older, but I need you to kind of do the best you can, and I need to see that, and I'll see it. So it's up to you. You do it or you don't, but at some point I'm letting you know that if things don't change, I'll get fed up because while I'm still young enough to find another guy, I'll probably have to do that. I'd never find another guy. I would never get married again. Not in a million years. But, 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 but the point is you might find another guy to have sex with. Oh, yeah, that's true. So that's how you tell him. You do not, um, you do not tell him you're going to cook healthy food for him. You do not tell him what to eat. You do not tell him where to go exercise. It's up to him to figure that out. So I just have to give him, do I have to give him like a timeline? No, I, no, I would not give him a timeline. The timeline's in your own head. And by the way, you should leave if you think you're being blown off. Unless you think you could be happy being with someone who doesn't care about that. I could be happy by myself. I don't, that doesn't bother me, you know? Well, I'm asking you, could you, what if he just blew you off? Could you be happy with him? No. Maybe All that's right. why I don't ask. Right, because you don't want to be blown off. Yeah, that's probably true. And that's why it doesn't change, because you never tell. Do you think it honestly would change? Okay, I don't, uh, No, no, no. I didn't say... <laughs> listen to what I'm telling you. He may blow you off. What would be a, a good enough incentive for him not to? Because I'm telling you, I'm still... I'm not, you know, the same age, but I still wear the same jeans as I did when we were married. Again. That's not enough incentive. So I don't know what incentive he's going to well, have. Well, he doesn't know this is important to you. And you think that's enough incentive that it's important uh, to me? No, you're not hearing what I'm saying. It might not be. And if it isn't, you have to decide if you want to leave. And then if you do, you have to leave. But you can't make him do it. Ah, that's too tough. <laughs> That's how life is, dear. Yeah, but, you know... When, when, when women have come to me, different. when women have complained about me, let me tell you what I do. When women complain to me, you're this, you're that, your show is this, your show is that, I point to the front door, I say, there's the door. But won't I be the one complaining to him? You, I'm, you're not going to nag or complain. You're just going to state the fact. So what, you're not going to tell him how to do it. You're not. You're not going to tell him how to do it. You're not going to repeat it. You're okay. not going to. You're not going to cut his meat for him or serve him uh, 350 calorie plates that are all measured out. No, this is his problem. To figure out. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what needs to be done. So I just tell him. I mean, I mean. You tell him how you feel. Right. You, tell, you tell him that at some point, and it, you're getting closer, that you're going to reach the breaking point, and you're going to move on, 
and you love them very much, but that this is important to you, and that if it doesn't change, you're going to change addresses. And leave it at that, and then see what the hell he does. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom, 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 Tom. Likas. Yo, amigo, come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camacho's in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Like a Show at one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in this Monday. The wildest live broadcast we do. It's Cinco de Mayo at Camacho. There's only one Cinco de Mayo every year, and it's going to be this Monday at Camacho's. The doors open at 2, and the show begins at 3 o'clock. Anything can happen, and it usually does. It's this Monday, May 5th, at Cinco de Mayo at Camacho's City of Industry. You take the 60 Freeway to Crossroads Parkway, and it's there on the south side of the 60 Freeway. Done deal. Now, if you need details or directions, call Camacho's right now at 562 695 57 77. And a friendly Camacho's counselor will be there to, to help you build your Cinco de Mayo. Okay. 562-695-5777. And we'll see you Monday at Camacho's. Uh, bring chicks. Don't wear underwear. Bring bail money. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Here is Sandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. 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 I think I have some problem. Um, I think I'm doing everything right with the guys, but I don't know why they end up, they always want to tie me down. What do you mean? Um... You just mentioned before, um, the only way to be faithful would be letting them do anything they want, right? I don't understand. What are you saying? I'm saying I'm letting my guys do whatever they want, but they end up, they want to tie me down. They don't want me to go out. They don't want me to have a social life. Well, why do you have to have a boyfriend? Excuse me? Why do you have to have a boyfriend? Um, I don't have it anymore, but from the previous... But, but why do you ever have to have one? I don't know. I like them. I like hanging out with them. And yeah, but guys, let me tell you something. If a guy feels tied down in a relationship. They don't feel tied down. Well, then why are they in a What kind of relationship is it? They don't feel tied down, but they tie me down. Like, what kind of relationship is it when people are tied down? Is it a, are you talking booty calls? Uh, well, that's another thing. Well, well, we'll get. Uh, the point is, are we talking about booty calls or relationships? What are we talking about? We're talking about relationships. Why do you need to have a relationship? If you want to go out partying, why do you want to have a relationship? Mm, it seems like that's what they want. No, well, guess what? Guys in relationships won't tolerate you going out and party. Okay. Period. It ain't going to happen. Well, I don't party anymore, and the same thing will happen. What do you mean by you don't party anymore? What does that mean? Uh, I... Well, I think it's probably not me going out. I think it's the trust issue. They just don't trust me. Don't trust um, you doing what? Anything. Like, like what? Out. If there are guys, they're just not. Where are thinking. you going out? Nothing. Clubbing sometimes. I'll get a club. Sometimes. Let's start with clubbing. The purpose of clubbing is hooking up. That's the purpose for most men. And the men you meet when you go clubbing, that's why they're there. And the guys you date know that. Okay. So if you want to be in a relationship, there's no clubbing. So how do I, um, how do I, have, let's not say a competitive relationship. How do I have a relationship? Why do you need to have a relationship? Why can't you have friends with benefits or booty calls? Then you can go clubbing all you like. How you do you all... make it clear with the, the other person about You this? tell them specifically, I'm not going to be tied down in a relationship. 
Okay. I go out clubbing with the girls. Sometimes I date other guys. Sometimes I mack out a guy in the parking lot. That's going to happen. And if you don't like that, can't handle that, don't even try it with me because it isn't going to work. Okay. You know, why can't you be honest instead of being duplicitous and telling a guy he's your boyfriend and then staying out till 2 in the morning at clubs? When I'm in a relationship, I don't do that. Maybe that's why. You just I'm said that you do. You go clubbing. You just said that. Yeah, once in a while. Not a, not, never. You can't do it. Oh. Guys won't tolerate it. Okay. Guys who tolerate that, they're clubbing themselves. And they're going to do what guys do when they go to clubs. Get laid. They're there to hook up. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Okay, another question is, I think I'm having a hard time falling in love with someone to love someone. And I don't Maybe know. Do, why do you need to be in love? Do you need to be in love? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to be in love. Then stop worrying about it. I feel guilty because people tell me they love me, and then I don't feel the same that way. That doesn't matter. You don't need, If you don't need to be in love, it doesn't matter how other people feel. Worry how about do you, you. when you love someone? What? How do you know when you love someone? Well, uh, look, if I knew, I wouldn't be divorced four times. The bottom line here is, why do you need to be in love? Why? I'll tell you what, when you're in love, you don't need to go clubbing anymore. You don't need to have girls' night out or girls' weekends away or girls' weeks in Cancun. I don't, don't want to go clubbing. It's weird. I don't want to go clubbing. I don't want to meet guys. That's that's not why I want to go. I'm going. It's just because of the, like my girls asked me to go. Guys so don't like it. Okay. You'll never have a successful relationship with a guy if he signs off on that. Okay. So what's but, the other things that I can't do if I'm with a guy? Uh, there's no tarting yourself up to go to work. No showing extra cleavage or nipples exposed when you're going to the office. Okay. There's no talking to ex-boyfriends. There's no MySpace or Facebook pages. Okay. And, okay, and you talk about um, guys don't like the girls to be sick. Okay, and when I was in a relationship, my boyfriends liked me to be a little bit chubby. They like it to have meat. Okay, so how do you find a balance between that? The, the, you are who you are. You don't do stuff like that for other people if it's not who you are. No. Okay. So I'll just be who I am as long right. as I am. Right, and you know who you are? You're someone who's not ready for a relationship. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. You should be free to go to clubs, and if you meet a guy, to hang out with him, or to have sex with him, or to mack on him, or whatever you want to do. Thank you so much. All right, Sandy, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Wow. Tiffany on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Didn't uh, Dean tell you to turn the radio off, darling? Okay. And did he tell you that? Yes, he did. Why didn't you do it? I did. My friend no, I just heard it. My friend keeps turning it off. Well, you have to st unplug the radio, throw it out the window if necessary. The radio being on confuses you and then me. Okay. It's already off. I already told her to leave. And it has to stay off for the entire length of the conversation. Okay. If I hear it again, I will hang up. Sure. Tell your friend that right now. But if you turn it over again, you can hang up. Okay. Okay. All right, go ahead. What did you want to say? Oh, pretty much what you were talking to that one other girl I just called. The Tom Likas Show.